right? So there will be a derivative coming in here through implicitly through the time, right? And that is actually the only one that can be to here. You can see already this goes is one of our R squared, this goes is one of our R squared, that's not going to give us radiation. But the term that comes out of this. Right? <coughs> and so what we get here, we get the time derivative there. So it's plus r dot p, another time derivative, gives us the, the second time derivative of r over r times gradient of gr. Right? But the gradient, the gradient of tr, well, it's just the gradient of this r here, right? It's minus r into this. So, Okay, so here we have one term that only drops off as 1 over r. This goes as 1 over r squared, this goes as 1 over r squared. One that. Okay, and the a over dt first just gives us the next another time derivative here. So, we have the negative of this gives us. So it's a 1 over 4 pi epsilon naught over 4 pi epsilon naught. This thing here, a dot over r vector c. So our first term, and minus the abt gives us minus u not over prime dot and
So, let's start with B. Let's curl. So, it's the curl uh, in there. So, let's curl up. So that's what we find here. That means the magnetic field that can produce radiation is mu naught over 4 pi c pi to cross p dot. Alright. Okay. Compare that to what we have here for the electric field. Let me go write this here for, for completeness. We have the electric field radial component as was it mu naught not over four pi. See, it's just a 
across something. What if I take R plus <coughs> this one again? So this is something that's Rp going somewhere from a perpendicular to R. Cross that again with something with R. It's still perpendicular to R. If I take R cross this thing again, and of course, this is already unit vector perpendicular to the unit vector. This will simply just drop back to R cross P. Right? This is something, so this is R, this is something that's perpendicular to R. R cross makes it something perpendicular to that again. R cross again makes it perpendicular again. Right? So this is as you would expect for radiant fields. Z-axis, 
we are looking at this at some angle theta. Then we can write R cross P dot dot points in what direction? We've done that exercise before. This cross that points in that direction, right? Into the board. And that is so this is P dot dot theta dot in y direction. Right? So or in the field, you can write as mu not p dot dot t not <coughs> over <coughs> by c r sin theta in the phi direction <coughs> and r cross <coughs> phi again brings us to theta direction. So this as we are not about that t not over y so over r in the theta direction. All looks very familiar to what we just just discussed for the single point chart. That's a very point. In particular, you see the same as we had for for the dipole. Right? So if we're looking at this charge distribution and the dipole of the charge distribution oscillates in some direction, the electric fields that we see in radiation oscillate along with that oscillation. So if you look at it like that, it oscillates like that, we see the electric fields also go in that direction. And the magnetic fields go in that Good. Then, next step, of course, calculate the pointing vector from this. So, the pointing vector as 1 over mu naught e cross b is equal, or just put these two together, mu naught over c p dot dot of t naught squared over 60 by squared sine squared theta over r squared and what direction is that pointing again? e cross b gives us theta cross phi goes in r direction okay. Okay, so this, this all looks very familiar, it looks very much like what we see from the dipole, right? just from an oscillating dipole. Well, of course, the oscillating dipole then was, was really just one dipole here, it's the dipole moment of whatever charge distribution we have there. But you see that that looks exactly the same. Right? So for an oscillating dipole, so for <coughs> oscillating dipole, He was just a Q times B times cosine omega T, something like that, right? So that was P naught cosine omega T and P one dot was then really just minus omega squared.
let's look at the total radiated power. So the total power going out in radiation again is S A. This here gives us our new knot. Not dot dot squared over 16 C and you have your side square theta by sin theta but that we had actually just done half an hour ago. What was that? Integrate over phi to pi and the sine square theta. So this you can write as x. This was 1 minus x squared n, right? Okay, plus 8 pi over 3. So the total radiant power will be mu naught dot dot squared over 6 by right. And go back to that oscillating dipole. So for the oscillating dipole, P dot dot was not omega squared cosine omega t. The time average of that so if you have a time average of p dot squared is the time average of cosine squared regular factor one point p dot omega to the fourth. So that means the radiant power we find that this is actually just a dipole, mu naught, mu naught squared, omega to the fourth over 12 pi c. Looks familiar, doesn't it? That's precisely what we have found for the dipole. So the general solution works. And for a single accelerated particle, so single point charge. Uh, P is just the charge Q times or well, distance D, right? Where the charge is. P <coughs> the second time derivative of that is Q times A. Right. So that means the radiated power, we use this with q times a, is u naught q squared a squared over 6 c. And that is precisely what we have calculated here. So it all goes together. And we're done with what we wanted to do today. And in fact, we've already started a little bit with next week's topic, the uh, week after next week's recess. So we've already done a little bit into the next lecture. We should not go any further on this, I think. So. There are no questions from your side. Anything else you'd like to discuss in more detail? Yes, yeah. um, the work mm -hmm. uh, is it still for Friday uh, this week, or uh, don't have to? I know many of you will probably not be in town anyway, so uh, that's, uh, I'm actually leaving today for Venice for Italy, and then I'll be also in a meeting next week. Until Wednesday, so I'm not going to look at those before next middle of next week anyway. Okay.
So if, if you want, you can turn in up until Wednesday of next week.